promising effects. We saw that the using condition place preference uh, that Hiantos has mild aversive properties and, it, and therefore we would deduce that it's unlikely to have um, abuse liability on its own. Um, we uh, did see an increase in dopamine efflux, but we would also quickly add that a simple increase in dopamine produced by a drug is not uh, a signature of the abuse liability of the drug. You can get the same signature with a drug that blocks dopamine receptors. Um, but it's very interesting that naloxone is indeed getting into the brain and affecting this uh, important transmitter system. Um, the morphine place preference data in which when we gave Hiantos with each injection of morphine, we were able to block the development of condition place preference, suggests that it might be modulating the reward properties of an opiate drug. And then I think the most uh, interesting of the behavioral data are the, the effects from the classical assessment of withdrawal in which we show that uh, Hiantos can indeed um, attenuate uh, the withdrawal symptoms that are seen in our case with naloxone precipitated withdrawal. And then um, the microdialysis data provide uh, further insight, again, providing the real confirmation that, that Hiantos is working on the brain. And uh, we were very excited, as I said a moment ago, about the ability to buffer the precipitated loss of dopamine this, that occurs when you give naloxone to um, uh, animals that are experienced uh, with morphine. And uh, we think it might be preventing a hypodopaminergic condition, which could be a correlative aversion. And then finally, um, I, I guess collectively, the behavioral data and the, the neuropharmacological data, I think do provide compelling evidence of a direct action of Hiantos uh, on brain dopamine systems. And of course, these are the very systems that are implicated, I think, very strongly in the neurobiology of addiction. So, um, you know, starting from scratch, uh, um, we're very, very encouraged by these data. We're, of course, sharing them uh, with our uh, Vietnamese colleagues, Dr. Song and others, and they're very excited about these data too. And we're continuing to try to understand in even more detail the mechanisms of action of this drug. And I think we're, there's ongoing experiments that I'm not able to describe at this moment, but I can tell you they look very, very encouraging. And I think we really have a good marriage here. This is a, a good partnership between uh, a Western approach to science and an Asian approach, more traditional, where these two approaches are converging and indicating that this may well be a promising new uh, candidate for the treatment of uh, opiate withdrawal and maybe other forms of psychiatric illness. So thank you very much and uh, happy to take questions. Very well. Thank you, uh, thank you, Tony. And I, I think what's exciting about this kind of data is, first of all, it underlines the the alignment uh, between the the traditional uh, medicine and, um, and 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 more Western European, as, as you were mentioning. But it also, I think, uh, helps helps us think about validation. When we think about uh, addiction, the, the the validation of of um, uh, whether or not we can validate that a treatment is actually addiction specific in a sense is uh, is is captured by this kind of data. So but let's open it up for questions sure. if anybody has any questions for Dr. Phillips. Yes, George. Yeah. Hey, you're on. Sure. Yeah. That's a very good point, George. Thank you. Um, might add an anecdote here. When Michael and I were in Vietnam, we went and visited one of these um, small clinics where people uh, could go and, and receive Hiantos therapy. Um, and with a, through an interpreter, we were, at, we, we were uh, chatting with a gentleman who had just finished uh, a four-day bout of um, treatment with Hiantos. He had been using heroin for 20 years uh, before he came into this clinic uh, on the weekend, four days before we saw him. 
and, uh, and again, without any prompting, just sharing his experience. And I, again, I don't put any more value in this other than you know, anecdotal uh, uh, evidence. Um, but first of all, he looked completely relaxed. He was not showing any adverse signs of having just gone through a serious bout of harem withdrawal. Um, he had slept for the first 48 hours or so. This is a highly sedative drug initially. Um, and uh, then had returned, you know, uh, uh, his appetite had returned, and he, uh, he, he shared with us the fact that he, he felt quite good at that moment in time, and he clearly had got through the heroin withdrawal episode with minimal adverse effects. So if that were to be repeated many, many times, and uh, then it would certainly support your suggestion that perhaps it is a, uh, a promising candidate for e easing somebody onto naloxone um, or maybe buprenorphine or some other form of therapy so that you could, because what's unknown here is once the person leaves those clinics, you have no idea whether or not they relapse. This clinical trial will assess that, but right now we have no evidence whatsoever. Um, we're going to be looking obviously in our animal models whether we can block relapse that's produced by exposure to condition stimuli or the drug itself or you know other forms of um, in, uh, that are highly reliable of, uh, to induce um, relapse but we haven't done that yet so. thank you very much for this presentation um, I know they have been uh, for a long time yes from Michael but I've never seen this kind of behavioral pharmacology tests. We are, they are very impressive. I just wonder, uh, about 10 years or 15 years ago, an Italian group was doing detox protocols with gamma hydroxybutyric acid, mm -hmm. which is also a strong dopamine releaser, mm -hmm. and showing the same clinical signs like sedation and no withdrawal. Mm -hmm. And they did it successfully. And now we learned the past maybe eight, nine years ago that there's a very high abuse potential in gamma hydroxybutyric yeah. acid. Yeah. So yeah, would I, there I, be some parallel? Again, I, I would be very surprised um, if that's the case. Um, the individuals in, in Vietnam that have used this drug are not reporting a craving for the drug or any interest uh, Hiantos, that, that little pile of brown dust that you saw there, it's actually quite pleasant. It, you know, it smells of the cinnamon content in, in it. And, uh, but despite that, there's, there seems to be no interest in uh, you know, obtaining uh, a, a source of Hiantos. So it, it, th there's no evidence that, that it has abuse liability of its own, whereas GBH, of course, is, is highly abused and uh, um, you know, is, is a known uh, Problematic drug. So, just on those grounds alone, I, I don't think we're 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 facing the same problem. <laughs> Very interesting presentation, Tony. A uh, couple of points I had. One was that in um, did I did I uh, interpret your data correctly in the sense that when you did place preference versus the true withdrawal signs, mm -hmm. that there was a bit of a mismatch. Yeah, that was the one, that experiment, we failed to block the aversion produced by naloxone precipitated withdrawal when we gave Hiantos prior to the withdrawal. Mm -hmm. uh, so there is that disconnect there. But, um, and again, we use several doses. So uh, th th those are the data. <laughs> uh, when we use the more conventional way of evaluating withdrawal symptoms, which is more based on physiological reflex and, and motor act, psychomotor activity, then we saw clear uh, beneficial effects of Eantos in, in buffering the withdrawal symptoms, uh, both at the low dose of uh, 100 milligrams per kilogram and also 250. Excellent. And the second question I had was in terms of long-term use of, of uh, Eantos and probably uh, impact of Eantos on the craving yeah. For drug, have you tested for craving? Not yet. We we are moving our labs into this building, and it's been a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully we'll get to that uh, this summer. Thank you.
Okay, well, we better uh, keep things moving here. Thank you very much.